Okay, uh, so this last little section uh, we need to address, um, or not this last little section, uh, the next topic is about how to watch out for when statistics can be misleading. Um, one of the uh, downfalls of, of taking a statistics course is I'm, I'm empowering you, I'm training you on how to properly read data, and I'm hoping that you won't use this for what I like to jokingly say, uh, for evil. Uh, it's actually very easy to manipulate data to imply things that aren't necessarily there and to a trained eye uh, they can notice what's wrong. Uh, so we're going to take a few minutes and talk about uh, some concerns that show up in graphs and how graphs can be misleading. Uh, when done correctly they're not but if done incorrectly uh, then whoever's doing the talking can get you to believe whatever it is they want you to believe. Um, so uh, take a look at these two graphs and what are some things that we notice are distinctly different from them. Uh, I'll go ahead and spoil it for you now. It's the same graph. Um, and as you uh, look at one versus the other, uh, there, one of the graphs is designed to do something that the other one isn't. Um, so one thing to notice uh, in this first graph is it looks like there is just an extreme trend. It looks, wow, things are just growing just out of control uh, as far as uh, life expectancy goes. Um, but in putting in perspective, when you go from the 50s to the 2000s, uh, we're only gaining about 10 years more of life expectancy. So it's a lot less subtle here. Uh, what's the main difference? Um, well, on the x-axis, there's no change, but on the y-axis, there is. So you want to watch for, on the y-axis, uh, when there's just such extreme differences in the numbers. Uh, and maybe there's a reason why they're trying to zoom in and emphasize something that, that maybe isn't really an issue. Uh, okay, uh, so take a look at this next graph, uh, and then think about uh, what you notice is different and again I'll tell you it's the same data. Okay, So you notice um, the first graph is three-dimensional uh, and the second graph isn't. Uh, that's the problem. Uh, when you do a three-dimensional representation uh, it typically overemphasizes things that maybe aren't necessarily true. Uh, you know from this graph it looks like the what is that tan is clearly the largest category um, but when you look at the 2D model uh, the tan and the purple uh, and the yellow are fairly close to each other, but it's a lot harder to tell in this 3D graph. Uh, so the trick here is to watch out for three-dimensional representations. Um, it looks neat uh, when you're trying to put it in a presentation, but it distorts the actual facts and makes things that aren't true look like they are true. Uh, and so couple of uh, just guidelines as far as uh, creating effective graphs. Uh, so hopefully we will use these instead of uh, abuse them. Uh, you want to make sure the title is clearly labeled uh, and if there is some sort of explanation needed uh, for what you're trying to say with the title, uh, give it. Uh, you want to avoid um, distorting things, whether it is in a three-dimensional graph or changing the Y scale so it overemphasizes something that isn't necessarily there. Uh, if possible, uh, try not to use too much white space. Uh, let's see, and if if it you know if the data does indicate that there is not a trend there, then of course leave it there. But um, just be aware of the the space. Uh, avoid excess clutter in graphs. Uh, avoid three dimensions. Uh, don't use more than one design in a graphic. Uh, and then, let's see, avoid relative graphs that are devoid of data or scales. So, um, I, I don't know, I, I like to just consider this to be common sense. Uh, if, if it looks like they're trying to emphasize something, you always want to question why the graph is drawn the way it is and if it's a, a realistic representation.